Hello, this is Neil from Dawlish Beach Cams. With the plans for Dawlish being heard by Timbridge Planning Committee, we thought we ought to bring you down for a close-up view of King's Walk. This is the current situation. We have a two and a half metre wide footpath. We have the railway and we have a five metre drop to the beach. So just what are Network Rail's plans and how does this affect Dawlish? Network Rail want to raise the height of the wall by two and a half metres. That is made up of a 1.4 metre raising of the footpath, which means it will be around the height of these railings. Additionally to that, they want another three foot concrete wall with wave return on the seaward side of the path. Now at long last, it looks like we have a means to stop people from occasionally falling off the wall. But do we really need that extra three feet of solid concrete or would as some suggest marine railings provide the safety aspect? There is extra concern from the residents of Marine Parade that the wall will reflect additional noise back to their homes. Network Rail claim an extra three decibels of noise will be created with most of the noise being trapped between the trains and the outside wall. To protect the resilience of the railway they are claiming the wall needs to be seven and a half metres high. That is almost as high as two double decker buses. That three foot high wall not only stops people falling off, but it will also prevent overtopping water from draining. With the footpath being raised above the height of the track bed, this water will take the route of least resistance, and that is going to be straight across the railway line into Marine Parade. In addition to this, the new design will act as a huge gutter for sea debris and pebbles from the beach. We've seen rocks thrown a lot higher than 7.5 metres, so after a storm the new walkway will become a gravel pit with only one way to displace, and that's onto the railway line. It is likely from what we have seen in the plans to cause more disruption to the line and more flooding of marine parade than the current wall permits. To add to those concerns, the designers of the new wall have only just announced that their design is being tested. We would also ask just how an untested design can be allowed to be put before the planning committee when it may well change after approval is given. Surely the testing should have been carried out as part of the design process prior to the plans being agreed. We are not against the resilience plans for Dawlish, but we do believe the design creates as many problems as it solves. We would like those plans to be considered with much more input from locals in a proper consultation. Dawlish will lose its iconic uniqueness, heritage and character as it loses those views from Marine Parade. This affects all businesses in Dawlish and not just those located in Marine Parade such as the Blenheim Hotel and Marine Tavern who have invested heavily to cater for the tourist trade. Many industry commentators are now calling for a review of the plans. Preferred options are to reopen the northern route on its own merits then to deal with the main threat of the coastal line of the cliffs between Timoth and Holcombe with a diversionary route available and finally deal with the Dawlish seawall section. We were thinking what, what similar height to where the seawall is going to be and have we got any footage of it um, in rough seas? Ah, got just the thing. Welcome to Dawlish Railway Station. Here's some footage I took the other day. Storms tend to coincide with a spring tide and 60 mile an hour easterlies. However, this footage was just 40 mile an hour. These are the conditions that it is claimed are the reason we need a seven and a half meter seawall. This is what Dawlish sees three or four times in a typical winter. The waves crash into the wall and go skywards. Higher than the station building, higher than the bridge, that is way above seven and a half meters. The spray comes down and is blown back over the platform and guess what, because the platform is above the tracks, those tracks become flooded and eventually stop the trains from running. These are the exact conditions that are predicted to increase in the coming years. Dawlish station is a listed building and so must remain as it is now. We have had three line closures since 2014 and all three closures have been because of the flooding in Dawlish station over the railway. The wall has stood firm, there has been no structural damage, no breaches and no cause for any closure. 
We may indeed need to improve what we have. Wave returns at Boat Cove? Indeed. Improve safety for coast path walkers? Absolutely. Hemming Dawlish in between 7.5 metres of white stone moulded concrete? Only if there's no other choice. It's fantastic to see the government is giving funds to improve the transport system in the southwest. Many are calling for some funds to be released for a line via Oakhampton and Tavistock again. It's sensible, it serves a growing population and it could be used for diversions if needed. We need to see investment for the serious issues of unstable cliffs between Holcombe and Timworth and get that bigger concern dealt with first. If the current plans and timescales go ahead, then Dawdish will be paying the ultimate price for the connection between Plymouth and Cornwall. The railway has been an important part of Dawdish for 180 years and it needs to remain that way but it needs to remain in a sympathetic and enhancing way to our town, which encourages its use by locals and the tourism trade. This needs to be investment in Dawlish and the railway, not just the railway. Since the plans were first submitted for approval, there have been a number of alterations. Network Rail have clearly been trying to take into consideration some of the local concerns with regards to drainage and appearance. They have also released a number of slides to answer the most frequently asked questions. Network Rail have also arranged a second drop-in session for Wednesday the 10th of April to allow for additional consultation with the people of Dawlish. We wholeheartedly support this initiative and hope that many will get the reassurances they are asking for during this meeting. Those who have been communicating with us just really want to know if this is the only solution and that this has the future of Dawlish as of equal importance to Network Rail as the railway itself. If you've enjoyed this video please share it for others to see.